performance improvement framework, PIF in short, looks at an agency, assesses what it does well, what are the issues it needs to work on uh, to be more effective in the future, and develops with the management of staff, the agency, an action plan to deliver that future. The reasons that we went into this was that we were pretty pleased with ourselves. We thought we were in pretty good nick, uh, and it wouldn't hurt uh, to come out with a report that showed that. The reviewers came in, uh, we produced all the stuff, that um, all the reports uh, that they needed, uh, and we pretty much left them to it. And we thought, well, uh, this is going to be good, we'll get some advice, a uh, bit of help, uh, we'll probably be showing up reasonably good. We knew there were traffic lights, we were looking at sort of a greenish tinge to the report, uh, and there'd be no surprises, so what do we get? Surprises. <laughs> uh, the traffic lights are the, the ratings, uh, and they bring a real sharpness of focus to the, the PIF reviews. Hey, Andrew, how's it oh, going? Yeah, good, good. As they say, uh, a picture tells a thousand words. The greener uh, the traffic light, the better position the agency is to deal with the future. Uh, the more red, the more work that needs to be done. Ratings, the ratings matter, and I haven't seen an agency yet that wasn't intensely interested in what those ratings are. It is what gives the agency quite a bit of pause at the beginning. They're nervous about it, and you know, there's a competitive side to all of us. We want to know how we're going to compare to everyone else. So, what do we do? Well, the first thing we did was get very defensive. <laughs> and and, um, and uh, really, actually quite angry, and worked ourselves up a bit. Uh, and then we got over it, uh, as you do. <laughs> and we had, she had to accept that uh, we had invited two uh, pretty smart cookies uh, who were experts in to look at our business. Uh, they hadn't actually looked at the bits that we thought we had. They'd found some stuff that uh, we hadn't been taking notice of. I mean, I think the lead reviewer is a key part of the process. Um, you need people who uh, understand the, the, the institution, understand the context. I mean, they don't need to understand the institution in detail, but they need to understand you know, what sort of organisation is it that's being reviewed. They need to understand what sort of context the agency is operating in. And critically, they need to have experience of the whole system. And they also need to bring their own personal experiences of, uh, of leading change, of leading organisations. Um, and I think that combination, um, it means that that role is critical because they can ask the right questions they can understand some of the answers they get because people's answers will not necessarily be absolutely uh, clear first time around, but they'll help, you know, experienced reviewers will be able to uh, understand what the next question they should be asking. And I think in particular, after the PIF is completed, I think the lead reviewers have, have got a role to play in helping the chief executive understand what his particular challenges are. I liken them to uh, being a critical friend for a chief executive. Uh, they all come from successful uh, senior leadership roles in uh, either the private and or public sector. So they've sat in the chief executive's chair. They know what the jobs are like. They're not uh, an academic commentator. Uh, and because they have that degree of credibility uh, with chief executives, uh, the comments that they make, both supportive and critical about the agency, has you know, much more credibility. Uh, they really are pivotal to the, the, the strength of the process. You do have to have confidence in the reviewers, um, and I think that that emphasises that upfront process. That's why the self-review is important, because it's about establishing that confidence, and it's about establishing that trust relationship. You're opening up your organisation to two people, and you're saying, here it is, all it's in it's come and have a look, and tell us what you think. Uh, so yes, you have to have confidence, but it's an interesting relationship between you and the lead reviewer. You also have to have some positive tension. When the reviewer comes in, uh, I mean, they're given a lot of paper to read, but actually the value is in the discussions that they have with management. It almost becomes a collaborative process of understanding the organisation, understanding its drivers, understanding what it is uh, that uh, needs to change to make it better. 
the critical benefit is the discussion and the collaboration that happens in those conversations between reviewer and manager. And the feedback that we're getting is that staff at all levels value the conversations because staff at all levels want to do their jobs better. By the time you get to the final report, you've had many conversations with the chief executive and usually with the leadership team about your findings. And in fact, it's not just about your findings, you're, you're testing ideas as they emerge. And they become part of the discovery process. And if you do that effectively, by the time you get to the end of the um, process and you actually have a report that's gonna be published, you have a shared understanding of where the business is performing well and where the organization needs to improve. And by the time we got to the end of the second report, they were already implementing changes. They're ready to move forward. They have already moved forward. They're no longer debating the ins and outs of the specifics of what are, what's in the report. Um, they're usually clearly focused on what actions they're going to take in response to the the, the PIF, um, which is the way you'd want it to be. What we are talking about now is the review process, which is going to is, is becoming a formal part of the PIF process. So it's not just a one-off, you get rid of it and it's gone. Um, it's about a really constant improvement process and you bring your lead reviewer in after a year or 18 months or whatever uh, and uh, get him to focus on what you've done and what you need to do. Uh, we've been on a journey uh, when we started the PIF reviews. Chief executives uh, had a degree of apprehension about the degree of transparency that's involved uh, in the PIF, uh, where you're not uh, just telling the world what you're good at, but you're also telling the world what you're not good at. We've now had two or three years of publishing the PIF reviews, and I think that's made chief executives a lot more comfortable because, uh, in general, I think the media, the public, I have welcomed the ownership that we're taking around our own performance. That we're not afraid to say that our organisations aren't perfect, because organisations are like people. Uh, they're never going to be perfect. They are always work in progress. But equally, uh, chief executives are showing that they're taking responsibility to make improvement, to make sure that they leave those organisations in a better state than when they inherited them. It's about being able to look ahead and think what it is that consumers want, what it is that uh, ministers are expecting from the system, and actually looking at, uh, looking at ways of delivering those more creatively. And I think that's where the bit of public services connection links into PIF, which is that what Better Public Services is doing is saying, actually, we've got to think of ways of uh, working together differently of thinking about what it is that citizens want that we should uh, in, in different ways. The aim of the Better Public Services program is to take New Zealand from having a good public service, which it has today, to having a great public service in about five years' time. We're already number one in the world for the absence of corruption. Uh, we've got to keep that, uh, and we're wanting to lift performance in a number of other areas to make sure that you know, we have uh, the best public service in the world. Everywhere across the world people are under some fiscal constraint of one sort or another, some more severe than others. But what that means is that there isn't a lot of money around to uh, fund services. So people have to look really hard at how they get the best value for the dollar that they've got. These are independent experts that come in and fundamentally that's what they look at. Are you really producing the goods and services that New Zealanders want, that the government thinks is the most important thing, that are really the most necessary things, and are you doing it in the most efficient and effective way? This is by far the best tool I've seen to do that in a comprehensive way that gives you a chance to actually improve your business in a reasonably safe environment. A PIF process is a fundamental part of understanding the contribution that your agency is making to better public services and has to and can make in better public services. PIF is all about improving the jobs that we do, improving uh, the workplace for public servants. Better public services at a whole system level is also about improving the jobs that we do 
on behalf of New Zealanders. Over the next two or three years, as we complete uh, PIF reviews for the core public service, we're increasingly wanting to uh, focus on the wider Crown entity sector. And the reason for that is the Crown entity sector is really important in delivering uh, a huge number of services to New Zealanders. So going into the Crown entity sector is really part of our future.